Hello and welcome to our channel. We are Downsized. I'm Lorraine Durham and this is my husband Christopher Durham and our channel is going to be talking about GLP-1 medications and how we've used them on our journey to be healthy and lose some weight. We've been married 20 years, Correct. 20 plus mm -hmm. years. We have three kids. We live in North Carolina and we own our own business. So we work from home in addition to traveling for some events a couple times a year. I've done every diet, I've tried every exercise, so this is something we wanted to try to become healthier, get off some medications, and see how this works for us. So, let me ask you a question, So, because we've been married for 20 years, so tell me about your weight loss journey. What, what, what does it look like for you for the last decades? My weight loss journey started when I was 10 years old, when my mom took me to my first weight loss clinic. I have constantly battled weight my whole life through my childhood, adolescence, through college, through having three kids going up and down. At points I've exercised my way out of being overweight only to have the weight come back and usually come back more. I've done Weight Watchers since I was about 15 years old. I know how to count the points. I could teach the class. I have a lot of knowledge about how to lose weight and things to do to lose weight, but all that knowledge and all those things never worked for me in the long term. So the drugs are exciting, right? It's so exciting. <laughs> it's a whole new class of medications that work on your brain, basically. So my journey's a bit different. She's always been on a diet, I think as long as I've known her, and even when it didn't necessarily appear that she needed to be. I, w I wasn't born a fat kid. I wasn't uh, overweight, really, high school, college. This is something that honestly crept up on me over the years, to where at my point we'll talk about you know where we are weight-wise and where we have been. But it crept up on me, and then as adults, my family are, have become large people. My mother was large. My father was la large. Really, in the last 10 years, I've lost both, both of them. Now, did weight kill them? No, weight didn't kill them. But weight was a contributing factor. And now, you know. Now that we have children. Now that we have children, it's something you worry about. Yeah. And, Wanting to be around for them. You know, I, term. I, I'm not a fan of the word foodie, but I have a love for food and restaurants and cooking that... Some days is overwhelming, and, and when people talk about food, I, I think about food. I watch food. I I do those things. Um, so we're a match made in heaven. A yeah. girl who's trying to lose weight, and a foodie who takes her out to eat and cooks her magnificent meals. <laughs> and it's not that we want to eat donuts and fried food every day. I want to eat good food and good, food that's good for me. But it's always in my head. It doesn't go away. So this class of medications is mind-boggling to me. And then. As we got married and moved into adulthood, I went on cholesterol medication and blood pressure medication and, you know, followed my parents in, uh, down that same path of being heavy and have on and off tried not to the extent that she has. I lost 20 pounds here and 20 pounds there and done things. Now we're in a different place and we want to tell you guys about it. And I think a lot of you will be in similar places because we are have had very different journeys then what's next what do we want to talk about we're going to give you an update every week as to our progress where we started where we're at now what we're taking what dosages so for me my starting weight was 193 my current weight is as of this morning is 156.4 and my goal weight is 145 i'm five foot five inches tall Weight Watchers says I should weigh no more than 150 pounds. I haven't weighed 150 pounds, I think, since I was about 25. My, my Like I said, my goal weighs 145. I'm down 36.6 pounds since we began our journey in September 29th of 2023. And I am currently on a compounded version of trisepatide, which is the active ingredient in Manjaro. My current dosage is 10 milligrams. And this is my ninth week on the 10 milligram dose. We'll talk about doses and starting doses and how far they go up in, in, in future segments. Christopher, your stats? Oh, yeah, we love this. 
He's doing much better. Everybody than me. wants to know what the old white <laughs> guy's weight weighs. So, so I started out at two eighty five point four. So I was closing in on three hundred pounds. What that meant for me is I was tired. I was snoring. My blood pressure snoring wasn't great. A lot. I just wasn't it just wasn't feeling good. And the doctor and I had long, long conversations about the weight and how to change it to the point of really my physician and I have been having a conversation about weight loss drugs for about two, two and a half years, and we couldn't make the finances work, and there was a lot of reasons. But So I also started in, on September 29th, so this has been a couple's journey for us. So as I said, I started at 285.4. My current weight is 229.4, so I'm down 56 pounds my goal weight is 190 pounds. I couldn't tell you what Weight Watchers thinks I should weigh. I think it's it's <laughs> significantly less <laughs> significantly less than that. Yeah. If you go by old school BMI, kind of the things people nobody tells you you should pay attention to. It. I think it's 175 or something like that. I don't think I need to be that low at all. Honestly, I would like to be at or around 200, not above 200, and and feel healthier and happier and get off the blood pressure medication and the, and the cholesterol medication. To add to his point about his doctor talking to him about weight loss, I have brought brought up weight with my primary care physician many times. One specific doctor that I've been going was going to here in uh, North Carolina where we live, and I would beg her, "Is there something you can give me? Is there some kind of medication?" And her reply to me was always, "Well, diet and exercise. Have you tried diet and exercise?" Yes, of course, I've been trying diet and exercise since I was 12 years old. And at one point, you know, and I've been on Weight Watchers off and on, again, since I was 15. And at one point in my journey with this doctor, I had lost 30 pounds. And I went in to see her and I said, I lost 30 pounds. And she said, I, I said, can you prescribe me the weight loss drugs now? And she goes, no, now you've got it. You just keep on going with the diet and exercise. So a lot of physicians, in our experience, either are all for it and recommend it, or they don't. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have high cholesterol. I don't have, my blood work has always been good. So it's, for me, the disease of obesity has just been about feeling tired, feeling not good in my body, not being able to do things I wanted to do, sit in seats I wanted to fit in. And I was a clothing buyer for the first part of my career. So that was a very weight and size focused industry that didn't help matters. I I bought plus size clothing for several of the chains that I worked for because I felt like I had an understanding of the plus size customer. So all that to be said, when I started talking to my physician about it, I don't know that he thought it was a great idea or not a great idea. And I didn't approach it with him as I want to take this medication. No, you, you really didn't. At no, first. my my approach was, I want to feel better. I want to be healthier. And at ninety some odd pounds overweight, it, it was insurmountable. I I couldn't imagine a play. I, I could get down twenty pounds and then I'd be back up twenty pounds, and it was just this yo yo thing. So we did blood work. We did all of the things to make sure that I was healthy, and then we worked through and counseled. And you know, honestly, he was awesome. And we were able to get to a point where I could start taking the medication in September. So it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was good for us. I mean, I well, and I had been seeing on Facebook ads for different online providers that were selling these compounded versions of the weight loss medications. Just seeing them, you, know, you, you see these ads, you see them on TikTok, you see them on Facebook, you see them on Instagram. And so eventually I just wanted to check them out. Also, Weight Watchers came out with a new clinic, which was you could pay an extra fee, see an online Weight Watchers doctor and get a prescription for these medicines, which you then took your to your local pharmacy. So it just suddenly was becoming very, I guess, mainstream. I had a friend who had success with the drug and I said, let's do it. Let's try it. So again, our journeys have been a little bit different. So I'm actually taking Manjaro's that bound prescribed from my physician, and you're doing a compounded one from from online. Yes, I'm doing a compounded version of trizepatide from an online provider called Mochi Health. Um, not sponsored. <laughs> we don't have any uh, 
affiliation with them, but it's been great. I can talk to a doctor online anytime I want. If I have questions, I can message, message them and I pay a monthly fee and then I buy my medications from them. It comes from a compounded pharmacy in Florida. We also wanted to include a little bit of what's going on in the world around health, wellness, weight loss, Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, all, the, all these GLP-1s, and keep you guys up to date as well. So talk to us a little bit about what's going on right now. Last night, Oprah Winfrey had a special on ABC. I think you can get the replay on Hulu. And if you're at all interested in these medications, I highly recommend that you watch this special. I've been watching Oprah since 1985. I've watched her get fat, get thin, wheel out the wagon of all the fat and say, I've done it. And then she got heavy again. And she, this woman has the resources, the money, the chefs, the personal trainers. I've read her books. I've read her trainer's books. And she could never lose the weight and keep it off. She started Wagovi earlier this earlier last year. And I mean, she doesn't disclose how much she's lost or anything like that, but she's obviously a smaller size, obviously. Uh, so she had some doctors talking about their research with these drugs. She had the doctors, she had the president of Weight Watchers, she had folks from the, <laughs> from the Eli drug Lilly companies and, and North, North, the, North Nordisk. Yeah. yeah, and just everybody talking very briefly. For To me, this special could have gone for hours. Like it could be like a 25 part special. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a they, little much, they but just, maybe we, we're yeah. doing that 25 yeah, part There you special. go. So that's Oprah, where if you'd like to be on, let us know. <laughs> Call me Oprah. Yeah. But she just touched on all of the, the topics surrounding it. The people's weight loss journeys. Is it okay for children to be on it? What are the side effects? Obesity being considered as a disease. At one point they compared it to alcoholism and they were saying 20 years ago, Alcoholism wasn't recognized as a disease. It was, if you're drinking too much, just stop drinking. Just like you tell an overweight person, just stop eating. Obviously, the alcoholic needs more than that. And so does the overweight person, in, in my experience. So I just thought, just recognizing obesity has things that go with it that makes it a disease and that it's not your fault just it's mind blowing it is just blew my mind here's a quote from oprah there is now a sense of hope and you no longer blame yourself oprah said when i tell you how many times i have blamed myself because you think i'm smart enough to figure this out and then to hear all along it's fighting your brain so it's you against your brain before you get to these so let's talk medications. about that. let's talk about that a little bit cuz that's that was the like trigger in my head it's the i told you I don't know any sports players, but I can tell you <laughs> chefs. I can tell you ingredients mm -hmm. when we travel around restaurants. And it's not that we're going to all-you-can-eat buffets. It's I would rather have one beautiful bite than have 50 pounds of food. I don't care about that. But it's, the, it's always in my head. So this notion that you are driven around food, that there's what the Twitterverse, the whatever the, the doctors call food noise in noise. your head, it's mind boggling. And, and it's And I've always heard that. I've always heard this voice saying, Eat, what are we gonna eat next? Okay, we just had breakfast. What are we gonna have for yeah. lunch? What's for dinner? What am I gonna have for a snack? How many points have I eaten today? How many calories is that? What do I need to do to burn this off? It was a constant constant voice in my head. And I remember being a, a child or even a teenager and this Food noise drove me to eat, somewhat drove me to hide food, to go and get food that my parents didn't know about, to figure out, you know, where I could get food before I could really drive or get food on my own. It's And it's not like I was starving. When I look back at pictures of myself, I look like a normal kid up to about age... I don't know, 13, went through puberty, and it, it just kind of hit very hard. And then from there, and then things happened. We moved right in the middle of my high school. I got very depressed. 
food was my friend, <laughs> food was there for me. I, I hear that a lot in other people's stories. They have these events, someone dies close to them or something happens and they turn to food for comfort. And in our society, we eat when we're sad, we eat when we're happy, we eat to celebrate. Yeah. That's so we're not doctors. We, we, we don't pretend to, to be scientists or, or medical professionals, but, but we do say the drugs and the science and the medicine that's revolving around this is dramatically changing. And honestly, I think it will dramatically ch change the way our society approaches overweight people and discrimination and even under even thin people who because the opposite of that i have food noise in my head is that there are people out there who don't have food noise so it's not like they're working hard right there right. it's just not there for them it's just it's not so a battle these it's are just not. two states it's not that one person's better or worse than the other person it just, it's just how life is and when you have this disease these drugs can help. I always thought I was that was just a me problem that I heard this voice that always told me to eat. Now to know that there's other people like me and to know that I can take this drug and feel normal. I can well, let's not uh, use the word normal though. Well, because it's I, I mean, that's the second time. It's it's not about normalcy. But what is, what is normal? I look at a plate of food and the first thing I think of is this isn't enough. This isn't enough food for me. I need all this food and then I'm going to need some more. And now after being on this drug, I think this is, this is a portion. This is a good portion. Maybe I don't need to eat it all. We've gone on cruises and things since we've been on the medicine and I'm able to pick up a dessert and try a bite. And if it's good, say, oh, that was good. I'm done. That's never happened to me in, in my life. I've always been compelled to, even if I didn't particularly like it, I had to finish it. I had to have all of it. And I don't have that, I just don't have that desire anymore. I can eat part of something and leave it and feel satisfied. So you have another quote from one of the doctors on Oprah's. <clears throat> yeah, one of the doctors, Dr. Butch who is the director of obesity medicine at the Cleveland Clinic's Bariatric and Metabolic Institute, said it is a uneducated belief that this is just a self-inflicted condition, as if people who have obesity actually want to have obesity. It's looked at like these are weaker people who have no willpower who can't cut it, and people who are thin can cut it. And he says it's not a matter of willpower. He even compared it to dieting for an obese person is like trying to hold your breath underwater. Your body is always going to make you come back to the top. It, it's You can keep it down for so long, but your body is always going to win. It's startling. It, it just, <laughs> it, it, just it, it, ch it changes perception. And hopefully that's what we can do with this. Obviously, this is the very first episode. There's not a single person watching this right now, but if no. you are... Say, and, say hello and, down there. And yeah, please like, subscribe. And we're going to be doing this as a weekly series. I know there's a lot of people out there that haven't heard of this before or don't understand or want more information. And that's completely understandable. I was at my Weight Watcher meeting about two months ago, three months ago, and I told the group that I was on a GLP-1 medication. And I, I got some haters coming at me, even though... Weight Watchers now is promoting these weight loss medications through their through their clinic. So it's 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 going to take a long time for people to fully understand what these drugs are and what they do and that's okay. So and everybody's on a different path, right? We all have different journeys and the drugs aren't magic. It takes a lot of other things so it, it doesn't we don't just magically lose weight we also have to have a good diet we also have to exercise we also have to do things and it'll be different combinations for different people let me be really clear though if anybody has made it through this far and you feel like throwing some nastiness in, in, in the comments i'm gonna delete it <laughs> telling you right now we're not playing that game we're not here for nasty um, comments. not here for nasty comments no. you can agree you can disagree if you disagree move on this is really about supporting people's journey to health and understanding, and we want to be there. And, and we want to show you what's going on with us, because we'll be up, we'll be down. You know, it's, it's just the way life is. Yep. Very good. So what was your topic of the week? 
also there's shortages right now with this medication. Christopher's on Manjaro on the 10 milligram dose. It is out of stock at our local CVS within 100 miles, Publix within 100 miles, Harris Teeter, I think Walgreens. And I'm in a lot of Facebook groups with other people who are on Manjaro, Trisepatide, Zed Bound. And it seems like across the country, it's, it's a national shortage. The Eli Lilly person who was on the Oprah show last night, they touched on the shortage, but not really. Eli Lilly, if you're listening, please make more. Ramp up your production. And I'd, I'd also like to say, please lower your prices. Right now, this is it's, it's very expensive if your insurance doesn't cover it, which is a whole other topic of conversation. But... We would really like to see these medications be readily accessible to people who need them. And we don't want to take away from other people on Manjaro who are using this for type 2 diabetes. This drug was originally developed for type 2 diabetes. Eli Lilly, this past winter, got FDA approval for Zetbound, which is the same exact drug, trisepatide, as what's in Manjaro, only it's only approved for weight loss. In higher doses. So. Yeah, and most insurance companies don't cover weight loss medication because they don't recognize obesity as a disease, even though obesity causes a host of other problems. That's what I'd like to see is more Which is the other thing. If you, if you want to give hate about us taking drugs away from it, from diabetics in the comments, I'm going to delete that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. obesity is a disease. There's no question about it, I don't think. Our medical professionals have prescribed this for us. It has helped immeasurably, physically, emotionally, the whole nine yards, and, and you know, that's where we're gonna be. So we'll keep bringing you what's going on in the news and have a conversation about it. We don't wanna be news guys, that's not at all what we are. It's more about commentation, commentating. And our personal experience. And our personal experience, and absolutely. And how it relates to what's happening in the world. All right, what's up next? That's it. That's our <laughs> that's our first blog. And again, we're not weight loss. We're not medical professionals. We don't give medical advice. Please always seek the advice of your healthcare professional. And that's it. And we'll see you next time. Absolutely. This has been Downsized with Christopher and Lorraine. Thanks.